So for this first one, to save room, I kind of scrunched this together. On your quiz, I'm going to line up the reciprocal functions with each other, like sine will be across from cosecant and cosine will be across from secant and tangent will be across from cotangent and so forth. Um, again, just to save room on here, I've scrunched them closer together. First thing you're going to have to do is Pythagorean theorem to get this missing side. So let's work that out off to the side here. The a squared plus two squared equals 10 squared. So that will be a squared plus four equals 100. Subtract the four and you're gonna get 96. So I would like for you to please pick up your calculator and try 96 divided by some perfect squares until you get one that's gonna work. I think it might just be four, no, bigger than four. There is one bigger than four that will work. Good, 16 times six, good. And so that would be four square root of six. You have to do that first. Now also be careful what angle is labeled. Do you see how theta is right here? That means this is your point of view. If you wanna label it, that means two is the opposite. Four square root of six is the adjacent, 10 is the hypotenuse. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. That would be two over 10. Now we are gonna have to reduce that though. So two over 10 would reduce to what? Good, that would be one fifth. All right, then let's do cosine. And you can do these in whatever order you want, but I'm gonna do sine, cosine, tangent, and then we'll do the reciprocal one. All right, so cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse. That would be four square root of six over 10. You're gonna have to reduce the four and the 10 though. It would look like this. So four tenths would reduce to what? Two fifths, good. So cosine would be two square root of six over five. All right, and then let's do tangent. Tangent would be opposite over adjacent. Oh, we're gonna have to do a good bit of reducing there. It would be two over four square root of six. So first of all, the two fourths would reduce to one half. And then you have to rationalize that. So you would multiply by square root of six. So your numerator would just be square root of six. In the denominator, you would have six times two. So that would give you 12. So square root of six over 12. Honestly, the hardest part of these problems is not the trig, it's messing with the square roots. Go ahead. No. Of course you can put the one there. All right, now we're gonna reciprocate them. Reciprocal of sine is cosecant. That's how you say this, cosecant. So what's your reciprocal of one fifth? Five, be, and if you write five over one, totally correct. Some people like to do that. Here, I'll put that five over one or just five. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. All right, so we're gonna have to flip this. It would be five over two square root of six. And then you have to rationalize that. So that would be five square root of six over what? If you multiply this by square root of six, it would be five square root of six over 12. Good, you have to do six times two, so 12. And then cotangent, you're reciprocating tangent. So if you flip this, you would have 12 over square root of six, which would give you 12 square root of six over six and then 12 divided by six is two. So two square root of six. Again, the hard part of these problems is not the trig. The trig is honestly the easy part. It's reducing all those roots, the, the, the tough part. All right, so just be careful. Remember that you have a calculator. All right, number three, draw yourself a right triangle. It doesn't matter where A and B go, but C has to be the hypotenuse. All right, I'm gonna put angle B down here. Again, it really doesn't matter. Angle B is 28 degrees. 
So then this would be angle A, this would be angle C. The sides go across from each other. So like this would be little b, like sides. The, the sides are lowercase. Remember a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It's just like that. The angles are uppercase, right? So a would be h. That's going to go right here. C is the hypotenuse. <clears throat> I really don't care what order we find any of this in. I have it written in this order, though. So let's just go ahead and do that. Angle A. What do all the angles in the triangle have to add up to? 180. So if you do 180 minus the other two, that's going to give you the one that's left. And if this one's 90, the other two are going to have to be 90. So you could even do 90 minus 28. Either way, what is that last angle going to be? That'll be 62. They all have to add up to 180. All right, now let's find side B. This is your point of view, the angle you have that's labeled. We're looking for B, that would be the opposite. And then eight is the adjacent. So if we have opposite and adjacent, is that sine, cosine, or tangent? Good, tangent of 28 equals B over eight. Listen, that is the work that I need to see. If you just have an answer on your paper, I can't give you credit for that. There's not a lot of work for these because you're gonna just put it in the calculator, but you need to at least write that. All right, so we're gonna type eight times tangent of 28. And side B is 4.253. All right, and then lastly to get side C, again, 28 degrees, that's your point of view. Eight is the adjacent. C is the hypotenuse. So if we have adjacent and hypotenuse, sine, cosine, or tangent? Cosine. So cosine of 28 equals 8 over C. Again, that's like the work I need to see. Now to type that in, you're going to do 8 divided by cosine of 28. So 9.060. All right, let's try that again. Draw yourself a right triangle. It doesn't matter where A and B go, but C has to be the hypotenuse. I'm gonna make it the same as the one above it, just for consistency, all right? So side B is 4.3, side C is 12, A we don't have. Again, it doesn't matter what order you find this stuff in. I'm just gonna do it in the order that it's written just to make life easy. All right, so angle A, this is your point of view. 4.3 is the what? Don't fade out on me, we're nearly finished guys. 4.3 is the what? Adjacent, 12 is hypotenuse. So that would be cosine. Cosine of A equals 4.3 over 12. How would you type that? It's second cosine, inverse cosine, 4.3 over 12, close parentheses. I got 69.002. Now here's how you can get angle B without doing any work. Again, if all the angles have to add up to 180 and this one's 90, that means these two have to add up to 90. Here's the fastest, easiest, no work way you can do. Do you see how this is already sitting in your calculator? Just hit minus 90 and then don't put the negative in front of your answer. Because those two should add up to 90. So just do minus 90 and then don't put the negative. You could also set up another trig function. I mean, you could do 90 minus that. You could store it. I mean, there's like a million ways you can do it, but that's the fastest, right? 20.997. All right, and then to get A, we're gonna do Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus 4.3 squared equals 12 squared. Again, you'll have way more room on the quiz. I was just trying to keep this to a half sheet to save paper. You can write it on the back if you want to. A squared plus, let's see. 4.3 squared gives me 18.49 equals 144. 
subtract that over, I got 125.51 and then square root. That's not gonna split. We can't reduce that. I would take this answer, or if you were to type it in and get the decimal 11.203, that's fine too. That's like whatever your preference is, but I would take either answer. All right, and then here's your two word problems. Oh, go ahead. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. So. That happens a lot because I go and tweak what I've done in years past and I move things in the erase problems and move stuff around. And then if I forget to renumber it at the end, the numbering gets out of order. I must have given a six question quiz at one point and then been like, oh, I only want to make it five. I'll shorten it. And I deleted a question and didn't renumber it. I apologize. Okay, All right, a lot of you will find the word problems honestly easier than some of the other ones that we just did. You just have to set it up yourself. All right, a person looks at the top of a cliff with an angle of elevation of 75 degrees. So your 75 degrees goes there. And again, I'm sorry, it's small. You'll have enough room on your plate. We are standing 35 meters away. So 35 goes at the bottom. How tall is the cliff? Sine, cosine, or tangent? Good. Tangent of 75 degrees equals x over 35. Slap it in your calculator, put some units at the end. Anyone want to share what they got before I tell you the answer? Perfect. 130.621 feet. Does anyone feel like that's easier than what we did here? I don't know. Or with like the roots? I honestly think the word problems are easier. Yes, ma'am. Oh, did I do meters? Oh, meters. Oh my gosh, that's a perfect example of what not to do. I can't like walk and chew gum at the same time either, apparently. Thank you for looking after me. All right, last one. Jerry looks out his window to the sidewalk below with an angle of depression of 47 degrees. You can draw in the sky if you want and put in that 47, but angles of elevation and angles of depression are the same thing. So just put it at the bottom of the triangle. I feel like that's the least confusing way to do that. He's up here, he's looking down. He sees George walking on the ground. Jerry's window is on the fifth floor. So he's 50 feet above the ground. This one's feet, let me circle that. I should get out a highlighter and like highlight the room. How far away is George from Jerry's building? So here's X, sine, cosine, or tangent. A lot of them are tangent because oftentimes you don't have the hypotenuse, right? Tangent of 47 degrees equals 50 over X. And you will type 50 divided by tangent of 47. I got 46.625. This one is feet. 